Hello and welcome to Time Between Times Storytelling. My name is Owen and I am your storyteller. I am your teller of tales in a traditional way. And today, in a break from tradition, we are going to do something a little bit different. As you know, normally when you gather here at the Time Between Times, we will tell tales of the Tulwith Teg or of old Welsh myths. But today, we are going a little bit older. Today, we are going a little bit further away. Today, we are going to ancient Greece for one of the most famous myths of all time. A tale to be told that will spark terror in your heart, but a tale of courage. Before we start, let us gather at the time between times. The time when it is neither night nor day, but the sun has gone and the sky is grey. Let us sit around the fireplace. And we can hear the howl of wolves, we can hear the growl of bears, but we know we are safe at the time between times, the time the tales are traditionally told. The time between times, the time that people see lights in the sky, the time that people see fairies, the time that people see ghosts, the time that people are transported to a time before time to be told a tale. And today's tale is that of Theseus and the Minotaur. My friends, many, many years ago, when the sun was young, in a place called Crete, there lived the Minoans, a culture of people who lived almost before time was born. And there was their king. His name was Minos. And there he lived on this island with his beautiful daughter, Ariadne. But... There was a dark secret in the island of Crete. There was a dark secret held right in the centre, for dug deep beneath the earth was a labyrinth, a labyrinth that went left, right, up, down, below, until it went to the very centre of the earth. And there in this labyrinth there lived a creature, a creature so terrible that to speak its name would spark terror amongst the people. It was called the Minotaur. It had the body of a man and the head of a giant bull. And there it would eat day after day, wanting more meat. This was a horrible creature that left loose. It would have cleared the land of people. But Minos held this in the labyrinth where it could not escape. But every seven years, he would sail his fleet to Athens to pick up seven boys and seven girls to be fed to the Minotaur in a, tr in a tribute to stop the Minoans from attacking Athens. And of course, the people of Athens were disappointed. The people of Athens hated this. And every seven years when the Minoan ships would arrive, all the people of Athens would gather at the port and wail and cry as the seven boys and seven girls left for the island of Crete. On this occasion, though, there was a prince of Athens, a prince of Athens called Theseus, one of the bravest men anyone had ever known. At this time he was a young boy and he persuaded his father to let him go as the seventh boy. He said that he would slay the Minotaur. He said that he would come back and free the Athens of the Minoan tyrancy. This is what he would do. He sailed aboard the ship when they came. He looked back at the port in Athens and could see all his friends and family and all the people of Athens wailing as he and the other children left for Crete. As they arrived, they were given a great party, if you like, in order to celebrate their arrival and possibly their last night on this planet. And whilst there, all the children could not eat nor drink, such was their terror. But Theseus ate everything that was put in front of him. He drank everything that was put in front of him. And as he looked across the room towards the Minoans, he saw King Minos and his beautiful daughter, Ariadne. And their eyes locked. And there was something between them. That night, as he slept in his room, Ariadne put a note under his door. He opened it and read it, and it asked him to meet her on a hill where the, where the moon was highest and lightest at midnight. And he went, and there they met. Ariadne gave him a ball of string and a sword and said, This ball of string will help you in the labyrinth tomorrow. This ball of string will help you find your way home. And he 
know what the sword is from. She took them back and said, Tomorrow I will hide these by the door of the labyrinth. Keep the other children by the door, but you have a task to do. Theseus did not have a plan, so this was a great help to him. And he took Ariadne's word. And the next morning, as the children made their way out of the palace in Minos, through the streets of the town, up to where the labyrinth was, as they went, all the people, all the Minoans, threw flowers in front of them, and all of them wailed and offered thanks, and all of them cried to see the children going this way, until they came to the great entrance of the labyrinth, where two huge wooden doors, as thick as a block of stone, stood there. It took ten warriors to open the doors, and the children were put in, and the doors were closed behind them. The labyrinth was lit by torches of flame all the way down the corridors. Sometimes the corridor was high, sometimes it was low. But Theseus said to the others, Wait by the door and hold the end of this string. I will take the ball and I will slay the minotaur. All the children cowered and cried by the doorway, but they held the string. And Theseus started to unravel it. Up and to the left he went, back and to the right down and up through the corridors. Soon he started to hear the roar of the Minotaur far away that echoed through the caverns. But still he went, down and around, up and down, until eventually he turned the corner and there it was. So savage a sight as he had ever seen. Its great horned head, its body as muscular as anything he had ever seen, a great ring in its nose. The Minotaur roared, lifted its club, and rushed to Theseus, who drew out his sword and stood his ground. And there, underneath the ground, they battled. As day to the night, Theseus against the Minotaur. Every time it swung its club, it smashed the caverns, and stones fell to the ground. But still Theseus fought this horrendous beast. Until eventually, when he felt he could fight no more, Eventually, when he felt he was so tired, he would collapse to the ground. He lifted one last bit of strength, pulled up the sword, and stabbed the Minotaur in the heart. And there it fell down dead. Using the sword, he cut off the bull's head. And using all his strength, he dragged it through the caverns, following the string back once more, all the way to the start of the maze, to the start of the labyrinth until he could see the crack of light in the doorway. And there were huggled all the children, and they cheered when Theseus came. They hammered on the door, and eventually it creaked open. And there was the king Minos with all his guards, their blades ready, for they thought the Minotaur could be coming out. But he rolled out the Minotaur's head, brought the children out safe, and said, No longer. Will you ever have to take tribute from Athens? No longer will you ever sacrifice lives to this great beast. No longer will we be fed to the beast in the labyrinth at Crete. Theseus married Ariadne, and they lived happily ever after. And the people of Minos and the people of Athens lived in a peace. And even now, even though this old city has been found, men and women still seek the entrance to the labyrinth where the Minotaur will be. It is said that even now, that if you listen to the ground in Crete, when all is quiet and the stars do shine, a great growling can be heard under the earth. And some people say that the Minotaur has returned. And that, my friends, is a tale from far away, a famous tale, a traditional tale, a change. I hope you are all safe. Thank you ever so much for subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please hit the subscribe button. Please give me a like and please give me a comment. It means so much to hear from you, to know that you are enjoying these tales, to know that I am just not sitting here talking to myself. Thank you. Diochamaur. And I hope you enjoyed the tale of Theseus and the Minotaur. Stay safe.